is everywhere. People who weren't quite sure what it was are playing with it on their phones. Is that good or bad? Yeah, so I've been um, thinking about AI for a long time since I was in college, really. Um, it was one of the things that, the sort of four or five things I thought would really uh, affect the future uh, dramatically. It, it is fundamentally profound in that the, the, the smartest creatures, as far as you know, on this earth are humans, um, is our defining characteristic. Yes. Um, we're obviously uh, weaker than, say, chimpanzees and less agile, um, but we are smarter. So uh, now what happens when something uh, vastly smarter than the smartest person uh, comes along in silicon form? Uh, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in that circumstance. It's called the singularity. It's, you know, it's a singularity like a black hole because yes. you, you don't know what happens after that. It's hard to predict. So I think we should be cautious with uh, AI, um, and we should, I think there should be some government oversight uh, because it affects the, it, it's a danger to the public. And so when you, when you have things that are a danger to the public, uh, you know, like let's say, um, so food, food and drugs, that's why we have the Food and Drug Administration right. and the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, uh, the FCC, uh, we, have, we have these agencies to oversee things that uh, affect the public, where there, there could be public harm. Um, and you don't want companies cutting corners uh, on safety um, and then having people suffer as a result. So uh, that, that's why I've actually for a long time been a strong advocate of uh, AI uh, regulation. Um, so that I think regulation is... Uh, f you know, I, I, it's it's not fun to be regulated. It's it's sort of, sort of a, somewhat of a, a somewhat arduous to be to be, to be, to be regulated. Um, I have a lot of experience with regula re regulated industries because obviously uh, automotive is hi highly regulated. You could fill this room with all the regulations that uh, are required for a production car just in the United States, and then there's a whole different set of regulations in Europe and China and the rest of the world. So, uh, very familiar with being overseen by a lot of regulators. Um, and the same thing is true with rockets. You can't just willy-nilly, you know, shoot rockets off, not big ones anyway, because um, the FAA is, uh, oversees that. Um, and then even to get a launch license, you, there, there are probably ha half a dozen or more uh, federal agencies that need to approve it, uh, plus state agencies. So it's, it, I'm, I'm, I've been through so many regulatory uh, situations, it's insane. And, and the, the, you know, sometimes I, I, people think I'm some sort of, like, regulatory maverick that sort of defies regulators uh, on a regular basis. But this is actually not the case. Uh, so uh, in, you know, once in a blue moon, rarely I will disagree with regulators. But the vast majority of the time, uh, my, my companies agree with the regulations and comply. Uh, so anyway, so I think, I think we should uh, take this seriously. And, and we should have um, uh, a, a regulatory agency. I think it needs to start with um, a group that initially seeks uh, insight uh, into AI, uh, then solicits opinion from industry, uh, and then pro has proposed rulemaking, and then those rules, you know, uh, will probably, hopefully, grudgingly be accepted by uh, the, the major players in, in, in AI, and, um, and we, we, I think we'll have a better chance of. of um, advanced AI being beneficial to humanity in that circumstance. So, but all regulations start with a perceived danger, and planes fall out of the sky, or food causes botulism. Yes. I don't think the average person yes. playing with AI on his iPhone perceives any danger. Can you just roughly explain what you think the dangers might be? Yeah, so the, 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 the danger, uh, really, AI is um, perhaps uh, more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. There's movies like Terminator, but I, it wouldn't quite happen like Terminator um, because the, the intelligence would be in the data centers. Right. Uh, the robot's just the end effector. But I think perhaps uh, what you may be alluding to here is that um, Regulations are really only put into effect after something terrible has happened. That's correct. 
if that's the case for AI and we only put in regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. You think that's real. It is, it is conceivable that AI could take control and reach a point where you couldn't turn it off and it would be making, making the decisions for people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, that's, the, that's definitely the, where things are headed, uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, um, the, the, the things like, like say, uh, ChatGPT, which is uh, based on GPT-4 from OpenAI, which right. is a company that I uh, played a, a, a critical role in, in creating, unfortunately. Uh, Back when it was a nonprofit? <sighs> yes. Um, I mean, the, 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 the reason uh, OpenAI exists at all is that um, Larry Page and I used to be close friends, and I would yes. stay at his house in Palo Alto, and I would talk to him late into the night about uh, AI safety. And at least my perception was that Larry was not taking uh, AI safety uh, seriously enough. Um, and um, What did he say about it? He really seemed to be um, one, one, one sort of a digital super intelligence, basically digital god, if you will, uh, uh, as soon as possible. Um, he wanted that? Yes. He's, he's made many public statements over the years uh, that, that the whole goal of Google is uh, uh, what's called AGI, artificial general intelligence or artificial superintelligence. But, you know, and I, and I agree with him that the, there's great potential for good, um, but there's also potential for bad. And so if, if you've got some um, radical new technology, you want to try to take the set of actions that maximize probably it, it will do good and minimize probably it will do bad things. Yes. Um, it, it can't just be health leather, let's just go, you know, barreling forward and you know, hope for the best. And then at one point, uh, I said, well, what about, you know, we we're going to make sure humanity's okay here. Um, <laughs> and, 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 um, uh, and then he called me a speciest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, he use, did he use that term? Yes. And there were witnesses. To other, I wasn't the only one there when he called me a speciest. And so I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, I've, yes, I'm a speciest, okay. You got me. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm fully a species. Um, busted. Um, so um, that was the last straw. At the time, uh, Google uh, had acquired DeepMind, and so Google and DeepMind together had about three quarters of all the uh, AI talent in the world. They obviously had a tremendous amount of money and uh, more computers than anyone else. So I'm like, okay, we're, we have a unipolar world here where there's just one, one company that it has close to a monopoly on uh, AI talent and, uh, and, and computers, uh, like so scaled computing. And the person who's in, in charge doesn't seem to care about safety. This is not good. So, uh, so then I thought, what's, what's the, the furthest thing from Google would be like a nonprofit uh, yeah. that is fully open, because Google was closed uh, for profit. So that's why the open and open AI refers to open source. Uh, you know, transparency so people know what's going on. Yes. And that it, it, we don't want to have like a, a, I mean, while I'm normally in favor of for profit, we don't want this to be sort of a profit maximizing of demon course. from hell. That's you know? right. <laughs> that just never stops. Right. <laughs> so that, that's how open AI was. What, what, so you want specious incentives here? Incentives that. Yes, like I think we want, we want pro human. Yeah. Let's make the future good for the humans. Yes. Yes. Because we're humans. So can you just put it, I keep pressing you, but just, just for people who haven't thought this through and aren't familiar with it, and the cool parts of, of artificial intelligence are so obvious, you know, write your college paper for you, write a limerick about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a lot there that's fun and useful. But can you be more precise about what's potentially dangerous and scary? Like what could it do? What specifically are you worried about? Okay, going with old sayings, the pen is mightier than the sword. Um, so, the, if you have um, a super intelligent uh, AI that is capable of writing uh, incredibly well and, and in a way that is very influential, um, you know, convincing, uh, and then and and is and is constantly figuring out what is more what is more what is more convincing to people over time, and then enter social media, for example, Twitter, uh, but also Facebook and others, you know. Um, and, and potentially manipulates public opinion in a way that is very bad. Um, how would we even know? How do we even know? 
So to sum up, in the words of Elon Musk, for all human history, human beings have been the smartest beings on the planet. Now human beings have created something that is far smarter than they are. And the consequences of that are impossible to predict. And the people who created it don't care. In fact, as he put it, Google founder Larry Page, a former friend of his, is looking to build a, quote, digital god and believes that anybody who's worried about that is a speciesist. In other words, is looking out for human beings first. Elon Musk responded, as a human being, it's okay to look out for human beings first. And then at the end, he said the real problem with AI is not simply that it will jump the boundaries and become autonomous and you can't turn it off. In the short term, the problem with AI is that it might control your brain through words. And this is the application that we need to worry about now, particularly going into the next presidential election. The Democratic Party, as usual, was ahead of the curve on this. They've been thinking about how to harness AI for political power. More on that next.